Hi, Stuart. Hi. It, oh, go ahead. Somebody has a question. Hi, Stuart. It's Paula. Welcome back, Paula. Thank you so much. I uh, missed you very much. Um, wanted to ask you about how spirit communicates with us via guidance or signs. Well, you know, look, the energy of this meditation is spirit communicating with us. The power of a class like this, the openness, the quiet that I see inside people, the depth that people go, it's all higher energy. But, you know, look, it's not just higher energy. The universe is infinite energy. There is no limitation to spirit. But spirit needs the help of people, you understand? In order for that energy to come into us, we have to develop a system inside that's first of all strong enough to allow it in. And that is our responsibility, you know? And doing that enables a human being to allow spirit to come into, you know, look, you know, we talk about spirit and everybody talks about, thinks it's some kind of hors d'oeuvre, you know, in the cosmos spirit. And it's not, it's just endlessly powerful energy. And in order for us to open to it and allow it to really work on us in depth, our responsibility is to build a system inside that enables us to do it. Otherwise, you know, it's like, you know, people walk around in this kind of, you know, holier than thou type energy and, and it's all a veneer. You stick it out in the rain, and it's going to peel up. I'm talking about really being grounded inside, really keeping the heart open, really, you know, having a quiet mind, all the elements that are a byproduct of the meditation that Lu Rudy left to us. If we master these things, it makes room inside us for spirit to come in and to really nurture us and to help us grow and to ultimately bring a state of enlightenment. So the energy of this class, the energy, you know, look, you know, I, I, I've said it a million times, you know, everything in life is a manifestation of God's energy. All that's missing is our consciousness. And our responsibility is to develop that consciousness so that we can look out at life and see this wonderful teacher that is giving us endless clues about what we have to do to grow inside ourselves. So life is no longer that enemy, you know, that problematic creature that we have to deal with, with all the bullshit that goes on in the world. It becomes one's guru, one's teacher. And I say it a million times, you know, I am not the guru. I have no need to be a guru. I was a guru and it really is boring. You know, my job is to help people build an inner life that is strong enough so that they can sit in front of the real guru and that is life. Please try and, uh, Vera, try to sit up and do the meditation while I talk. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> So there's, there's a marriage, there's human responsibility that opens to receive what is endless in the universe. But we have to take care of our part of the bargain. If we don't do that, it's, all, it's just all talk. You read a book about chakras and you suddenly become an expert. And that has nothing to do with the spiritual life. So human beings have to take care of their responsibility. And their responsibility is to build an inner system that is strong enough to become a vehicle through which God's energy can flow. And this is not something that, yeah, we're born that way, but by the time we're four years old, it's all gone. So then we got to spend the rest of our life rebuilding that chakra system we came into the world with. And then 
we live in God's playground. How many times have I said that? that this is not, you know, the world of our ego or mind. It is God's playground. And we have the development to be able to live here with love, with joy, with openness, with, you know, and that's how spirit manifests. It also will manifest as anger and, you know, depending upon what your chemistry is, you know? I mean, if people are all twisted inside and full of chaos, that's how spirit's going to manifest in their life. If they're Minds are quiet, they're centered, their hearts are, then it manifests that way, as love, as compassion, as joy. It manifests in the world depending upon what people's inner lives are all about. And the, the incredible thing about this meditation is that it gives you the opportunity to transform your inner life, to master all the internal chaos. And then spirit comes, comes anyway. It's just how it manifests in our life is completely dependent upon our condition, what we're like inside ourselves. And that's a human being's pact with God, you know, to do that work. And if you don't do the work, don't complain about how crazy the world is around you. This is just showing you exactly who you are. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Does, does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Hi, Stuart. Yes. I think you just answered my question. In November 14th class, one of the things you mentioned, which I hope everybody looks at again, uh, you had mentioned transforming Maya into reality. And I think you just answered that. Even more so. Well, that's, you know, look, it's Maya until you have the inner capacity to learn how to use it to grow and get closer to God. Then it's no longer Maya, it's real. It's helping you to grow. The same exact thing, you know, that is killing a person can also get them closer to God, depending upon their inner capacity to transform it into just steps on a ladder that lead into the cosmos. It's amazing. This could be the exact same experience. It depends on how you use it and how, you know, in a, your inner development is and your capacity to transform Maya into, you know, one's guru. <laughs> really what to do, what not to do in life. It's teaching us every single moment. And we have to have the inner ability to recognize this. That's what this meditation is all about. It's what Rudy taught and why he passed his meditation on to us. You know, not to create lineages and gurus and all this nonsense, you know, but to teach people how to transform illusion into reality and to grow because of that and as I, I'll repeat it again it's not me that's the teacher I'm not the guru my job I told you a million I'm a kundalini aerobics instructor <laughs> you know, I try to help people to build an inner life so they can sit in front of the real guru and that's life itself and when people can do that, then they can transform all the illusion of the world into reality. Because it becomes their teacher. You bow to your teacher. You understand? You open to the teacher. You learn from the teacher all kinds of internal lessons that help you to grow. But we need the capacity to do this. And all meditation is about is building that capacity. That's it. And that's kind of a wonderful way to live, you know? I mean, I, 
because it really gives us such a different perspective on the world. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? A question, Stuart. Yes. What are your thoughts on practicing self-observation in day-to-day -day life or observing our responses to different situations? I think you make yourself crazy. <laughs> That's my point. You'll drive yourself right into an insane asylum if you continue to do that, you know? I mean, you know, look, it, it's about not about self-observation, because then you're using your mind to analyze how you're responding to the world. It's about, build, again, for the 500 billionth time, it's about building an inner life that allows you to be a vehicle for God's energy and allows you to experience. It becomes experiential, not something you examine in your mind, but you become one with life by building that kind of system. If you spend your time analyzing and figuring out yourself, you know, look, you go to a therapist, they'll charge you $200 an hour to do the same thing, you know? You're gonna make yourself crazy. You know, but okay, I blew it, I made a mistake. The hell with it, I'm gonna sit down and work on myself to get stronger and to learn from whatever happened to me in life. I like this, 10 minutes later, you might hate what you like if you examine it in your head. But it's okay, I'm gonna work and I'm gonna build an inner life that is strong enough to allow my life to be experiential. I am a living entity in this world. You know, it's to be in the world, to live in the moment, you know, to live in the present. And if you're living in the present, you're not gonna be analyzing yourself. You're going to be living. And yeah, you'll make mistakes. We all make mistakes. So what? Just an opportunity to continue to build a life, an internal life that is strong enough, you know, so that, you know, one becomes a vehicle for spiritual energy instead of a thinking machine that analyzes everything that you do. So I don't suggest doing that. You know, I mean, people talk about that a lot. I, I don't suggest doing that. I suggest really learning from the things that happen in your life so that you can go inside and internalize everything and build a strong chakra system. Because that is the key to mastering, you know, all the chaos inside. Transform the chaos into chi, into love, into harmony and balance. And, you know, we have a breathing exercise and a meditation practice that will help us do this. Certainly help me do it. You know, for the years that I've been doing this. And boy, I'm telling you, it saves you a lot of headaches. <laughs> you save a lot of headaches, not having to figure out all the things you do. You know, you, you create stagnant water, you know. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I mean, look, I spent, just to finish up, a lot of time with Rudy. You know, I used to go out with him all the time to Chinatown, to the movies, to this. And one of the most extraordinary things that I learned from him and really affected me so deeply is the way he lived and how he was capable of transforming a place like New York City into a sacred temple. That to me was one of the most extraordinary things I'd ever seen in my life when I was a young man. That new, when I was around him, New York City became a sacred place. Everything he touched and did became sacred. From going to the Second Avenue Deli to have a couple of hot dogs before class. <laughs> to, you know, 
you know, everything else. I'll never forget, we were driving in a car and he was, he was doing a fast, Rudy. And the car broke down in front of a pizza parlor. And his response is, it must be God's will. And he went into the pizza parlor and broke his fast <laughs> with a slice of pizza. I mean, it was just wonderful. The irreverence was so sacred. The sanctimoniousness was so sacred that it just allowed me to see all the bullshit in life and all the things that people drive themselves crazy with. And it was just not worth being involved with. Just learn to live and enjoy life and enjoy, live in the moment, respond to the moment. Let the moment teach us what we have to do as human beings to grow. And the moment becomes sacred. And wherever you are, you know, it's sacred. Whatever you're doing, it's sacred. If you're living your life in the moment. And to live your life in the moment, you got to build an inner life that is strong enough to do it. You know, it's not just being a vegetarian and, you know, dressing in orange costumes and, you know, it, you have to build an inner life that enables you to be strong enough to live every day in the moment. And this work really is about that. That's what this meditation is about. That's the gift that Rudy left to us. And I love it because I never know what's going to happen in three seconds. I really don't. I live my day that way. Yeah, I never know what's going to take place. I just, it just unfolds. You know? <laughs> and all these things happen. And I'm open enough in myself to just enjoy them. And, you know, some of them are rough and difficult. And, but, it used to bother me years ago. They don't bother me. All right, it's just what I got to take care of. That also is the teacher. How to be strong enough inside to take care of the negative things that take place in the world. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Stuart? Yes? Before we, before we go, uh, what Mike had just asked you about self-observation. You know, if we center, we're just detaching from everything. We're going to see things inside us, but not be those things. So we're not analyzing, just saying. What is the question? Tony? The question is, is, in that sense, is there an observer, but we're not analyzing, just pulling back. It's like a higher observer. Why do you need an observe? Just live. What do you need to observe? You know? Well, we see. We see our, you know, just being. Just being. I guess just I mean just being. <laughs> just live. Be. Be in the moment. You don't have to observe yourself being in the moment because then you're not being in the moment. You're being in your head. Just be. Now, you know, look, this is an ideal thing. Nobody's going to do this perfectly. We all have to have that irritation in us. <laughs> like Rudy always talked about in the oyster to get the pearl. But it's to be, not to observe the way we be, because then you're limited to whatever your understanding is about life. And life is so transcends anything we can understand about it. So we have to open and, you know, I, I was talking earlier about right before class, a friend of mine called me, a very close friend of mine who lives in Paris. He's an artist, a wonderful artist. And I've known him for many years. And I could tell you some of the most amazing stories that happened between him and me. And he's a very dear friend of mine. He called me up 
And he was just going on and on about this book that I wrote, how spontaneous it is, how totally inspired it is, you know, and how it could be, you know, 20 different novels could be written from this. I mean, it was incredible. And, and, and I, and I was so, I opened it, I said, okay. I said, you know, Mordecai, that's how I wrote it. When I finished that book, I read the book and I said, my God, I wrote this? And this is really true. I said, I wrote this book? I couldn't believe that I wrote the book. Total inspiration, total without thinking, you know, yeah, the editing required, you know, craft, okay? to put it together and make it whole. But the actual inspiration for the book, when I read the book, I said, oh, this is amazing how I couldn't have written. I, I didn't write this. And yet it just flowed through, created a book, a wonderful book. Now life should be that way, it just flows. And the craft, of living that way is the development of a chakra system using the mind and the breath, the will and the need to grow, to develop a chakra system because meditation, as I've said a million times, is just nothing more than a craft. Meditation is not a spiritual life. It's not a religion. It's a craft. And learning that craft teaches us how to master all the blocks and the tensions inside ourselves that keep that inspiration from flowing through us so that we can live our lives that way. We need a craft. Just as you know, a guitar player needs a craft and an artist needs a craft and a lawyer needs a craft. We need a craft. And the craft is the meditation and the tools are the mind, the breath, the will to do it and more than anything, the need to do it, the hunger inside oneself to have a spiritual life. I hope this is clear, you know, because I went through this just before we started the class. I told them, look, I have to, I'll call you back tomorrow, you know, I have people waiting for me and I need to do this class. But this is what he was talking about, total inspiration. And I said to him, Mordecai, I, when I read that book, I, didn't even, I couldn't believe I wrote it. And he said, well, that's what inspiration is. Creativity, real creativity is. Life should be that way. You look out at this miraculous world we live in, you can't believe that this is coming through you. And yet everything is sacred. Which book, Stuart? I wrote a novel called Madness Falling from the Sky and it's about the 1960s. And it's a very interesting book. The title comes from a poem by Rabindranath Tagore, you know, that I read. I was a young man living in Paris, and I went, I used to do poetry readings at a place called Shakespeare and Company, a very famous bookstore in Paris. And I found a book there by Tagore, and I, that line I never forgot. And when I wrote the book, I said, that's the title for the book. You know, and it's a very interesting book. It's not a, it is a spiritual book, but it's written as a novel. And I, I think you would find it interesting. It's about, if you have any interest in the 60s, whoo, this goes, I have a guy now, some investigative reporter in touch with me. You know, we have this dialogue going on and he's doing a, a story on, a guy named Ziff, who was a publisher in the 60s. And it turns out a close friend of mine from the 60s used to live in Ziff's house. And I never knew this. I knew where he lived because I'd been there a number of times. And this guy got in touch with me wanting to know about this friend of mine and I knew Ziff. And so what we've got now it's about Rudy. And it turns out, this is really interesting. It turns out that Ziff probably knew Rudy. 
because Zip was into yoga and meditation in India, and he lived like five blocks away from where Rudy's gallery was. And they, I'm sure they knew each other. So the conversation got very interesting. They say, you never know what's going to happen. You know, and the guy's not reading that book, Madness Falling from the Sky. He's telling me, boy, it's giving him a lot of insights into the 60s. Does anyone else have You never know. I, that's why you have to be open. You never know what God's going to send you, you know? It's like that guy, Joseph Capoli, you know? the hero with a thousand faces, you know? You never know the mask and the face of God as it manifests in your life. And you have to be open because it always brings something that's interesting, and opportunities to change and grow. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, there'll be a meditation tomorrow evening. And again, I always finish with this, and maybe you're bored and tired of listening to it, but God bless you all. And thank you for being here. This is amazing what is going on here. And I'm so grateful to be able to sit here and to, you know, this incredible marriage between these things that come through and all of you opening to receive them. And the work you do on yourself certainly inspires me to go deep enough to try to bring this level of teaching to you all. So bless you all. And uh, there'll be a class tomorrow evening, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. God bless you. Thank you, Steve. God bless you, Stuart. Right, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.